than the Christians have accused them of. Uh, you know, like David and all the other, Jacob, and they've accused them of sins. And you accept the hereafter with the definition that the Quran has given. They have surety in the hereafter with the definition that the Quran has given. Without that, you cannot become a Muslim. And obviously, I'm not going into the, the, the nitty gritty you know, details because each one will be discussed in its own place. Yes, there was a question you wanted? Um, you said there is a natural instinct of human beings to learn and know more. So obviously that could be towards positive things and negative things as well. So how much are we allowed to learn about negative things and up to what extent? Because some people would like to experience it first and then to come to a conclusion, yes, it is wrong. Or some people based on other people. So what's Islam stand on that? Or how far to go to learn yeah. about anything? Human beings have two things, trial and error. Many things they will try, you know, like um, certain foods and, 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 and many things. But then we believe in divine law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell you many things. Don't try these. You don't need to make an error because I'll tell you that alcohol is haram. Certain meats are haram. Certain foods are haram. So the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal for you, even those may be harmful for certain people. So trial and error will be for, for things which are permissible in divine law. This is as far as the practice is concerned. Now as far as belief is concerned, can you say that, okay, let me try a belief which is wrong and can I deny God or can I just deny something? Uh, according to theology, you're not allowed to deny a belief and then come back to it once I prove it. Did you all follow that? So you cannot say, okay, I'll deny this and I'll come back if it, if it is proven to me right. Based on theology, you would accept it and you would keep looking for answers until you're satisfied. But in philosophy, you can deny it until proven uh, otherwise. So in philosophy, you would go the other way, but in, 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 in theology, you do not deny. You continue with it and you keep looking for answers. The final question. Yeah. Uh, how would you like, prove the eternity of life thereafter? How would you prove the eternity? Good question. How would you prove the eternity in the hereafter? The hereafter, inshallah, when we discuss the, the qiyamat and, and the return, the final return, we'll discuss uh, why is the life in the hereafter eternal and this life is not eternal. Uh, basic answer is that it is not um, uh, materialistic. Uh, in the hereafter, the needs are not materialistic needs. Um, so, a logical answer. Otherwise, the Quran says the traditional answer. From tradition, it will be the Quran saying that it is humfiya khalidun. This life is is very short lived, and the hereafter is eternal, khulud. Uh, but basic is that the, the needs are different. Um, but inshallah, when we go into the return, because it is re related to the return, and uh, it is one of the fundamental arguments, basically, of the Muslims against the non-Muslims, against the materialistics that they deny the hereafter completely. They, uh, basically, once you die, everything has ended. So that is our difference between, between the, the ones who believe in a religion and the ones who deny completely. So we, that, it is a whole study. Because they, you know, the, the whole basis of the materialistics is, once you die, there is nothing. So why strive so hard for the hereafter? Why do you want to do so much for the hereafter? There is nothing in the hereafter. That's what their argument is. So inshallah, once we come to the... Uh, argument on the return, we'll go into that. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil.